every single agency sounds the same. You go to their website, if you get their pitch from them, they all sound the same. Welcome to the Tech Savvy Recruiter, the podcast for recruitment and staffing agency owners keen to explore the tech innovations reshaping our industry. I'm Andrew Roger from RecMate. And I'm Belinda Kerr from Recruitment Garage, and together we're your hosts bringing you a stellar lineup of tech experts ready to help you understand and more importantly, benefit from the increasing array of tech available to you today. I always um, think of it as a little monkey on my candidate's shoulder, whispering things into their ear saying, well, you haven't heard back from you know, Roger Recruitment. You've heard back from Hillier Recruitment and Kerr Recruitment. Um, let's pursue those two options where there's, you know, I think we're programmed um, at, at the DNA level to expect a poor outcome for, for most stuff. So it keeps us in that fear or flight stage. We're a little bit fearful. If we don't know something, we're assuming the worst, so we run. Mm. Um, you know, that basic back to cave person stage. Mm. Um, likewise with the candidates, if they don't hear anything, they assume the worst. It's like, yeah. oh, that's, that one's not progressing. I'll, I'll focus on these other two um, and then we'll keep keep going there. And lo and behold, they, they get a job with one of those other two because that's what they're focused on. That's such um, a good training point there. And it's it's that whole Recruitment 101, isn't it? And Justin, you said it. It's like taking that brief at the beginning and getting those interview times locked in up front. Like we we know that's important, but listening to your, what's coming out of your data, that's now, you know, 110% more important. Yeah, well, you've got to consider that a candidate, not only are they looking at two or three or four or five opportunities, they've got bills to pay. They've probably, they, they could be leaving a job or they want to get out of their job they're in right now and they've got time frames to actually align all of this too. So if your role, you can't actually tell them what's going to happen next if there's not a start date and the, if the recruiter goes, well, we don't, the client doesn't know when the start date is, well, I'd actually recommend not even recruiting for that role right now in the first place. Don't take the job mm. brief. Wait till they're ready because they're not. So all this information actually yeah, enables the candidate to make a decision, am I interested in this job? Because I can't wait 10 weeks to start this role because I've got another opportunity that I'm no. interested in. It starts in six weeks. That four-week gap is, well, I've got bills to pay. Yeah, yeah, yeah 100%. Yeah, I was, I was reading, um, I think it was the, um, the grid report that was mm. produced by Bullhorn. Um, and they've got a big focus on talents or candidates and they've got a stat in there buried somewhere around uh, communication frequency for a candidate now this is maybe not somebody who's in a interview send out slash i'm considering you shortlisting you for the job this is a candidate who's applied for something right? yeah. um and it's a minimum of once a week whilst yeah. they're looking for work they want to hear from an agency I think more than once a week is about 25 percent of candidates expect that so that's a big chunk that want to hear twice or more a week just after they've hit apply now okay so that's not somebody of pre-screened shortlisted sent the resume to a customer that's a different ball game altogether of a level of contact this is just an average person who's clicked that apply now button mm. so it's um yeah i think that yeah we ask your candidates what you're doing uh, who, who you're working with what's what sort of frequency how they want to interact as well you know what sort of communication they want you know it's going to vary from the baby boomer to the gen x to the millennial to the gen gen zeds um they'll all want something different you know the the doctors uh recruiters that i work with the older generation there they want the old phone mm. um they don't want to receive a text they don't receive an instant message they don't want to receive a whatsapp just give me a call mm. whereas the other end of the scale no nah, i'm not going to answer that one don't know who it is text me before you call me, then I might answer the call. Some of the Text me to book in a call and then we'll have a call. Yeah. yeah. That's it. No, there's, there's different stats around that as well. You know, you know I, was, I was listening to a podcast um, outside of the recruitment space and, and that was the adage there, um, pre-warn your callers that you're about to call so they go to pick up the call. Um, <laughs> like, yeah, different world. But, yeah, that's, that's, that's from my, my mental lens. But for other people it might be, yeah, that makes sense. I don't want I'm not going to take a call if mm. I don't know what, what it's about. Why are you calling? I need to prepare myself mentally to pick up that phone, right? Um, so lots of different lots of different things that you can learn, but just ask. Mm. You know, yes. you don't know if you don't ask, right? Yes. So, <laughs> you know. And habits ask. change too, don't they? <laughs> I remember once I went to a, it was a conference about Gen Ys. It was a while, it was a long time ago. It was about Gen Ys and the Gen Ys were still pretty, pretty young. I think there's and still a few around, you know. You know. When, they, when they were like in their, you know, early t- 20s, it, said. it was a while ago, yeah. And the guy on stage was talking about his younger brother who was, um, he just couldn't understand it. He, um, his grandma, I think his grandmother had passed away and he sent a text saying, 
oh, you know, I'm sad to hear that. And I remember thinking at the time, oh, my God, like he didn't even bother to call. And now I, when that sort of thing happens to me in life, I think, oh, I probably shouldn't call. I'll just text them because, you know, they might be with their family or whatever. So yeah. over that time, my views, my views change. So, you know, that's just one example. And I think so what might be a, a text message this time in a few years' time might not be. It might be something might be something be different something that different, they want. Yeah. So we'll be doing send, send, tele- send a hologram across or something. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. it's not a yeah. set and forget yeah. thing, is it? So it's Luke, not like. Luke, it's like, we need your help. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's not like do the do the research Half and it's the done. Half won't get what the, what was just said. No, about, so, um, no, that's right. <laughs> um, unfortunately, generational gaps. <laughs> Moving right along, everybody. Moving right along. Moving right along. Um, now, I was just thinking something popped into my mind, Justin, around yeah. how you know the, the stuff you guys do can help with. We'll talk about specific around client relationship management, around how yep. customer sentiment um, can help. You know, build build strong bridges there. Um, what have you seen that works well for some of your customers using your product that they've employed? What strategies have you seen that um, are really effective? And maybe with some of that data set that have, is delivered by your business to effectively build and maintain stronger relationships with clients? Because let's face it, it is a bit of a battle out there, particularly at the moment, um, to hold on to a client um, and build that relationship. So how have you seen your customers utilise data to help with that client relationship management? Yeah, I think the the most important thing of all of that is they actually have a true point of differentiation. Um, I was saying this a couple of weeks ago in another webinar I was on, that every single agency sounds the same. You go to their website, if you get their pitch from them, they all sound the same. And it's been the same for 20 plus years, 30 plus years since recruitment's been around. Every single agency sounds the same. What's your key selling points, right? It's it's that we've got, and I see agencies saying we've got 150 years experience in recruitment. No, you don't. <laughs> Adding up your employees' years doesn't equate to 150 years. I'm really sorry, but it just doesn't. That logic is flawed. Um, and no math. Was, was that a team of 300 recruiters, Justin? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. six months each. Um, <laughs> so, so yeah, I can do the math quick. So it just doesn't add up. Um, so. It actually yeah. gives them a point of difference because they cannot just talk about how good they are or what they do, which let's be honest, everyone thinks they're awesome and they all say they're awesome. They've actually got the evidence to back it up. And the unique data sets that we collect actually gives them not only the ability to show their clients how they represent their brand in the market, but how their client represents their own brand in the market, which a lot of the time is very, very scary. They're yeah. not good at it. Hiring managers are not good at interviewing. We have the data to prove it. <laughs> so they can actually go to them and go like, here's how we're representing your brand. Here's how your hiring managers are representing your brand. And just sit back and wait because it's going to be, oh, wow, we had no idea about that. The, the then, numbers will say the awkward parts of that conversation. Yeah, correct. <laughs> you don't have to actually say your hiring managers suck. The data will do that for you. And then, so that's the, that's the setting mm-hmm. expectations of this, what it's like to work in this job and this company, et cetera. But then once it's there, once the candidate's there in reality, what's that environment like? Is the job what they expect? And they've got that data to show. So they don't have to really tell a story because the data does it for them. So all of a sudden they've got this distinctive mm-hmm. data proposition instead of a USP. You've got data telling the story. And my most frequent phrase I use, um, across the business and to all our clients and they actually quote it back to me now um is the data doesn't lie it just doesn't yeah so they take that and what we've seen is that they win more business from that existing account they've got more trust with the client they actually then can build exclusivity with that client because that client wants more of these insights so they give them more of the work tell us more Mm. about our business that we don't even know about ourselves yes please Mm, that's great. That's gold. Love that. And it's, it, and it's not much work to get to that point where you've got a data set to talk about at the end of the day um, with your customers. I, I was talking about this exact same topic um, this week with another with a client of mine and um, I said, wouldn't it be beautiful if you could once a month for your top, top 10, let's start with your top 10 customers, present to them a monthly summary. And this yep. is all the great stuff you've done and it's backed up by stats. Your team doesn't spend a minute to prepare that because your system has that all embedded. It could be, you know, the you know objective stuff. This amount of the jobs that we've brought in. This is the amount of work we've done for you guys, and then this is the outcome. 
and that this is how we make people feel from those that sentiment mm. perspective yep. that you that you serve up and here's a few gaps fred fred over in you know this team here um, might need a bit of coaching we've got a coaching service that we can help help fred with if you'd like to put him through that yep um, mm. whereas mary as soon as we send somebody through mary she's your best seller to get a candidate across the line um, to join the business Sounds like you're talking I about. I love that. Uh, it's because, and especially like with. Oh, yeah. no, no. sorry, just I was going to say because with my cohort, these smaller, the smaller businesses like that one to ten space, they really feel it. They they're always okay. looking for a way to stand out, and yeah. you know what conversation can we have that's different that makes us stand out? And what you've just talked about there is absolute gold. I love that. Yeah. It's, yeah. Any um, agency. It's, any it's not, agency not with your. No, it's not. Any agency, whether you're Hayes, whether you're, you know, um, uh, you and you, mm. um, Sharp and Carter, the, you know, the more um, larger agencies here in Australia, and then you get down to the small one to ten uh, size employee agency. Your point of difference is not how many jobs you place, how many years experience. It's actually about the experience you provide. Mm. People want to 100%. work. People want 100%. to work with people they like. So mm. if your candidates and clients mm. don't like you and your employees don't like working in your business, good luck. Yeah. And um, and people who get them as well. Yeah. That's a big thing for all of us now. We want to be working with people who understand us and get us. They're not trying to force stuff down our throats. They're trying to bring us along with them. Mm. Yeah. That's that really, really powerful cool. stuff, Justin. Um, is it my turn, Andrew? It's my I turn think, to I ask think a question. you've got a question lined up there. Have I? You do. So, Justin, one, one thing that's been niggling in the back of my mind is around some of the challenges that clients might have when they've got some of this data in front of them. Mm -hmm. um, so what I was going to ask you was what are some of the biggest challenges that are faced to, you know, ensure that there's a positive experience for candidates and clients and your internal stakeholders? Um, and, you know, in, in, is there ways or are there ways that tech can help overcome those challenges as well? So there's a couple of questions in there. There are. Um, look, I think it's about knowing what experience you provide in the first place. I think the biggest challenge a lot of agencies have is that they think they know. Uh, we're great at doing this. Um, I've, I've had agencies yeah, who have cool. gone live on our platform who've turned around and gone, no, we, we prepare our candidates brilliantly for client interviews. And then the, and I laugh at them, obviously, because <laughs> they've got literally no idea. Um, and I've got no idea whether they do or not either. <laughs> but it's like you're putting your statement out there. I can't wait for the data to come back. <laughs> Let's see what happens. Um, and Let's then there, invariably see. it comes back and they're no good at it because they've been so confident they're that good at it. I heard an example uh, of an agency who, yeah, in that exact story of they thought they were great at preparing candidates for interview. They were rubbish and it got worse and worse and worse, worse month on end. It was about four months in a row I kept reaching out to the owner and going, I won't say his name, um, <laughs> almost did, um, you know, this is not. No, what don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is not looking good. You need to jump on it. That was month two. Month three, it was like, hey, mate, what's going on? <laughs> month four, he's like, yeah, okay, <laughs> we've got a problem. <laughs> so they jumped into training. They yeah. did that. They fixed it. They showed the consultants what was going wrong and actually did some training. This is what we need to be doing. This is how you prepare a candidate for interview. Next month, they had their greatest conversion to placement they've ever had from interview. Wow. So... Knowing Great. more so what's going on is the biggest challenge that agencies have because if you've got your head in the sand and you're not measuring it, you're relying on gut feel. And whilst that'll work 80% mm. of the time or maybe 20% of the time, it's not, it's not going to give you everything you know. And you can't, you can't realistically know every single uh, quality aspect that your consultants are delivering every minute of the day. So you need to measure it. You need mm. that insight. So the biggest challenge really is knowing everything that's going on across your business. You can't possibly know that. No business owner worth their salt will go, I know everything that's going on in the business. You just don't. You can't. Was there a, mm. there was a second part of that, mm. wasn't there, Andrew? Did I miss the second part? Um, yeah. Can tech help overcome some of the challenges that you see internally? Yeah. Well, look, obviously, I'm incredibly biased. Um, <laughs> we measure all of this for everyone. I so thought I'd actually... throw you that bone. <laughs> <laughs> Every review is aligned to the consultant, but it's also aligned to the individual job and the client. So we're measuring the client at the same time and how they're providing the experience. Mm. So you might actually be doing a fantastic job. And, and this comes back to that challenge as well of not knowing you don't know the experience your client's providing. 
And what the data has clearly shown us over the last you know, five, six years is that the hiring managers have the greatest impact to outcome in terms of impact to placement and having that not occur. If they provide a poorer experience, the conversion halves for when it's a better experience. So you need that level of insight. You need to be measuring this. So yeah, that's what we do. We give you that insight to go, right, here's what's going wrong and why. Go fix it. And your hiring managers aren't that great either. You need to go fix that as well. So yeah, there are solutions, of course. Um, and you should be, I mean, you should be measuring it. It's as simple as that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's a there's a great quote, Peter Drucker, what gets managed get what gets measured gets done, right? So yeah. you know, you can't you can't manage what you, if you don't, don't measure it, you can't improve. I'd it. love to know. It's true. No, that's right. I'd love to know, Justin, if you've got any more exam like that was a great example there. Any more sort of specific examples that you're happy yeah. to share? Either client or candidate side or internal external, it doesn't matter. But I just just to really show people how you know, the data, and that's obviously using, tech, you know, this is a tech podcast. It's obviously using data to collate and yep. interpret all of that. But um, I, I just love to, if there's more stories, I, I like stories. I'd love to hear if there's any more of those. I've got a data example for you. And I've got, I've got a, a story for you as well. Okay. We'll go with the data example first, because this is actually the, the two different parts of the process where impact happens. And it's not at the placement stage. It's already done and dusted. Everyone's already happy at placement. When the candidate and the consultant have their interview, the job's getting pitched, the candidate's pitching themselves, they're trying to feel each other out. This is a good match, blah, blah, blah. Consultant goes, yep, I like you. You're going to be right for this client. I'm going to put you forward. When the consultant gets that stage of the process right, there's five unique questions we have the candidate review them against. When they get that score 90 and above, it converts to placement four and a half times more when the score drops below 90. So 90 to 100 is when they get it right. I mean, wow. 80 to 89, there's a four and a half times difference wow. in terms wow. of conversion wow. to placement. That's massive. <laughs> Absolutely enormous. Awesome. When the hiring That's manager. That's huge. Yeah, so all That's our scores huge. are out of 100. When the hiring manager scores 90 plus out of five unique questions, last quarter, let's see if I can remember the numbers at the top of my head, it converted to placement 44% of the time. When it dropped to 80 to 90, it converted to placement 28% of the time. Gosh, big change, big change. Now we yeah, had, and they're just not in our view, are they? These kind of things, no, they're just not no. things that we register against. So the use of this now. Do, do you have an got, alert that gets sent when it drops yeah, below ninety, and I can yeah, do some we've re got, repatriation we've got work with that particular candidate? Triggers and things and everything going off all over the place, and data lights up on the screen in different colours and. <laughs> It tells you what's going on. Uh, yeah. There's there's graphs <laughs> there's graphs that show you your conversion to placement based on um, hiring managers and what they're doing, etc. But our clients have literally there's there's one client in particular I'm thinking of that has taken this hiring manager experience that they're providing to candidates back to them and shown them what's going wrong. They are actually struggling struggling to mm. fill jobs with this client. They actually showed this data and wow. trained the hiring managers on. Uh, what they should be doing. Following two or two months later, uh, same jobs they went out to market with. There were seven jobs they were trying to recruit for this client. They didn't fill any of them previously. They couldn't work out why. And this actually turned out to be why. Hiring managers were providing really crappy experience. They trained them, went back out, same job, same salary, same hiring managers, same everything, but better equipped hiring managers. They filled every job. The scores before were 56 Crazy. out of 100. The scores after were 92. Yeah. What a and it's always good having data too, because you're not criticizing the person as such. It's just no. the information that you're Absolutely. dealing with and training around. So it doesn't yep. make it a personal attack. It just makes yeah. it, a, it, this is how it is and this is how we fix it. Data doesn't lie. Yeah. Love that. People do. No, no not doesn't. yet anyway. <laughs> yeah, not until our AI might get a hold of it and make <laughs> that happen. We'll see. Yeah. Find out. And, and actually, that, that leads on to one of the, one of our final questions, I think, for today, around the future. You know, what 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 is emerging in your wheelhouse, Justin? And you know, how do you think it's going to shape um, candidate and client experiences in the recruitment se sector? You know, these amazing AI stuff that's happening as we unfold. I mean, it's just been, been amazing ride right, the last twelve months. That's for sure. Um, yeah. What's the next 12, 18 months going to hold, Justin? We've, we've certainly touched on it all, but it's a matter of pulling all that together. So 
we're heading in that direction as well, um, yeah. surprisingly, AI. Um, so that's coming to our platform next year. We've built out you know, really in-depth candidate client feedback. So we know what every consultant provides on that front. We know what the clients provide because we've built that out. We've got employee feedback into the mix. We're adding performance reviews into the platform and then we're sticking AI on top of it all. And what we're going to be able to do with that is actually go right. Uh, and we're also looking at the environment that the consultant themselves work in, whether they work from home, hybrid, or work from office primarily. So we're actually going to be able to have a look at this full picture of a consultant and a full picture of the agency and understand are the consultants that work from home primarily providing a better candidate and client experience? Are they more satisfied and have better performance review outcomes than those who are purely office-based mm -hmm. or hybrid? And what is the difference? What is the gap? And how do we compare to the rest of the market? And to get our lower consultants up to the higher performing consultants, what needs to be done? So it's a matter of pulling all this data together and actually getting AI to analyze it to go, right, your employees who are hybrid are better performing in this area, underperforming there compared to the ones who are working from home or um, uh, in the office all the time. So understanding all these different moving parts, not just of AI, but the work environment today as well, which is very different than what it was three years ago, mm. is key to actually going, right, what is the best model for us? Mm, amazing. So, Justin, that is also very interesting and some really great takeaways. My favourite was the – actually, I had two favourites. One was the one-second increments. No, but lots of really good takeaways. My favourite is the 1% rule, though, because I think agency owners, you know, because I'm thinking about my cohort, agency owners get so overwhelmed with everything and they think that they've got to do everything at once. But if we can just go for those one percenters – at the end of the year, that makes a huge, huge difference. And I yeah. love everything what you do. I know we spoke before and you said you're going to the UK over uh, there as yeah, well. So we've got UK, yeah. Oz. You're not, you're not in the States, are you? Are you uh, in the States? Not yet, no. We were Australian. We were yet? in about nine or ten not countries yet. where our clients are based. Um, but, yeah, primarily it's Australia, New okay. Zealand slash UK. Uh, but I, I agree with you, the one percenters, and I say this to our clients as well, we don't measure rocket science stuff. We measure one percenters. That's actually literally, mm -hmm. if you look at the questions we ask, it's no brainer stuff. It's the one percenters you should be nailing every time. And the consultant shouldn't be scared mm -hmm. of it as well. I've, I've used the came up with this line a little while ago. The consultants actually have the answers to the test on the screen. We show them the, re the questions mm -hmm. they're going to get reviewed against. It's the cheat code. You know what you're getting yeah. reviewed against. If you get these one percenters right, which they're on the screen in front of you. You should get, well, we're dealing with people. You're not going to get 100% all the time, but you should go pretty close. Um, so it's nothing scary. Yeah. It's just about knowing. And those numbers I mentioned before about income impact to placement outcome, they're very real. Yeah. Yeah, really, really. Hey, I love everything that you you do, and I'm so delighted that you, you came to chat with us today. I want you, I want, I want to hear the 60-second pitch. I want to know more and how people can get in touch with you. I've got, I I've got a 60 go minute, there, Justin. Just it was a 60-minute pitch, I think Andrew was saying. Before. Did I say 60 uh, minutes? 60 no, seconds? No, I think I said 60 minutes. <laughs> um, yeah, look, what we do is, but look, I, I can really dumb it down into 60 seconds and say we just help you improve your business. We help you improve your consultants by their skill sets and the experience they provide to your candidates and clients, which enables you to improve the candidate and client experience, which enables you to improve in impact to placements and the outcomes that you're all looking for. So, and it shines a light. Really what we're doing is shining a light on what you think you might know, what you probably do know, but reconfirming it all with data. And the adage of the line that I use quite frequently mm. now, the data doesn't lie. And once it starts stacking up, very hard mm. to ignore. Um, so it's just about knowing rather than not knowing and making sure that you're doing the right thing by your candidates, all, all of your candidates and clients, not just a select few. Yeah. And your employees as well. Yeah, love that. That's amazing. Terrific. Perfect. Well, I think that's a wrap, BK, for today's episode. I think so. I think yes. we've squeezed a lot of juice out of Justin. He's been oh. very forthcoming and, and interesting. He has. He has. <laughs> He's probably got other things to do today apart from talk to us. Amazing. Amazing. <laughs> as, amazing as entertaining though. as we are. Yeah, as, as, as fun as we are to be, it is time to say goodbye. And a really big thank you to you, Justin. Very insightful to chat today um, and really great insights into how you can just do that 1%. You know? yeah. um, I did look up as we were chatting. It is definitely James Clear in his Atomic Habits book. Mm -hmm. If you do 1% a day, um, you end up being 37 times better by the end of the year.
Okay, so that's just 1% okay. per day. There you go. Um, to our listeners, thank you so much for joining us today um, and hopefully we've taken a few little kernels there to put into your wheelhouse of improvement. And um, if you're thinking about, you know, anything to do with customer sentiment, you know where Justin is. If you don't, look on LinkedIn, you'll see him within three seconds there. He's always there. Uh, so please reach out and have a chat with Justin around how his business can help yours to do things that little bit better each and every day. And obviously, don't forget to hit subscribe if you found this session valuable to stay up to date with the latest recruitment insights. Um, if it sparked some sort of idea, question, feel free to reach out to uh, Belinda or myself to have some specific conversation or join in the conversation in the chat feature, uh, which on with whatever social media channel that you're on right now. Yeah. So can and I Oh. You go ahead, VK. I was just going to say, equally, if you are a, a tech provider, um, don't be shy reaching out as well because this is about, well, it is called the Tech Savvy Recruiter for a reason. And so if you're out there listening to this and you think you've got some value to add from that perspective, don't don't hesitate to reach out. Yeah, we'd love to have a chat to see how we can weave you into a upcoming episode. So yeah. Thanks once again for joining us. And um, you, until guys. next time, may your candidate pipelines be plentiful and your hires be perfect fits. Goodbye for now. Goodbye for now. Thank you. Thanks for joining us for today's episode of the Tech Savvy Recruiter. If you'd like to stay up to date with the latest recruitment trends and insights, make sure that you remember to subscribe so you don't miss an episode. And also, if you'd like to speak to Andrew about turning your tech stack into your secret weapon or myself around creating an agency that delivers you more money, more meaning and more freedom, we'd absolutely love to chat. Reach out to us on LinkedIn. Thank you so much for your support. We look forward to seeing you next time.